Hey, what's up, Social 10? Um, right now in this unit, we've been talking about legacies of historical globalization. So I thought I'd just do a really quick review and then we're gonna get into today's lesson. So we've been talking um, about how globalization first kind of occurred. We know that uh, kind of the earliest stages of globalization was the creation of the, or the formation of the silk trade route as goods moved from Asia into, uh, into the Middle East and into Europe. But as Europe got kind of a taste of the great luxuries of the silk trade route, uh, they wanted to find new, more efficient ways of moving um, their people and goods uh, between Europe and, uh, and, and Asia. And so European countries began to explore the world to try, try to find new trade routes to Asia. And we know that a lot of these explorations are pretty unsuccessful, but eventually they did end up bumping into um, us here in uh, North America, and they formed colonies here. They formed colonies in South Africa, uh, sorry, in South America, and then they began to form uh, colonies all over the world. So as a result of European exploration, uh, the world became more and more colonized and Europe began to have more of an influence over the world, and they began to extract resources from the rest of the world to drive the European economy. So this is kind of what we've talked about we know that, uh, that countries like Great Britain became very dominant nations in the world that had a lot of control over different parts of the world, including us here in Canada. But we're talking about what kind of impacts has this, have these, uh, I guess, historical experiences had. Um, what sorts of impacts has colonization and imperialism had on, um, on other countries or, and on other nations? And you know, one thing that we did talk about already was the impact of colonization on places like Rwanda. We talked about how the Rwandan people, the Hutu and the Tutsi, uh, generally lived in peace with each other, but as a result of the influence of the Dutch and the, uh, the, Dutch and the Germans, right, they learned things like racial prejudice. Um, they learned the kind of the social construct that there are races that exist and that some races are more superior to other races, which eventually led to kind of animosity or conflict between them that inevitably uh, came, came to kind of a, a climax with the Rwandan genocide of 1994, uh, where you know, close to a million people were slaughtered by machetes and, uh, and clubs. So pretty disturbing thing to think about. Now, in relation to the colonization of Africa, um, we could almost look at any country in Africa and see how it's been impacted in most ways negatively by European colonization. But I think that there's, there, I, I kind of, I think what I've done up to this point is I've made it seem as though that the only people that have been really negatively affected by colonization have been uh, people native to that land. And um, I'm gonna give you guys kind of a, another really interesting legacy of historical globalization and the way that that has impacted the lives of people in South Africa. Um, because it's, it's been both negative for people of European ancestry and it's been negative for people um, that are of kind of native, the native ancestors to that land. So I, I think that the, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of a history lesson on South Africa today um, to start and then I'm going to kind of get into how people have been affected there and, and how people are still being affected there to this to this day um, So some of those Legacies some of the nasty things that have been left behind as a result of colonization of the South African land So the first thing I'm going to get into is is some of the history there I hope I haven't lost you already, but um, I'm just going to show you guys a little bit of a picture here I turn the camera around so you guys can see this better but basically, South Africa is this region right here. This picture that you're seeing is, yeah, I'm going to explain what all these lines are and stuff in a minute, but I thought I'd just kind of tell you about the story of South Africa. So South Africa is a country, if you didn't know that. We're not just talking about the southern part of the continent of Africa. There's a country called South Africa. And this country, South Africa, was actually colonized by two different European uh, groups. So the first group that came here landed down here in an area known as the Cape of Good Hope. And wh who those were, were those were the Dutch. So there was a, a group of Dutch travelers in the 1600s 
that were trying to find a trade route to Asia. And they actually went shipwrecked there in 1647, right down here. And when they went shipwrecked there, the survivors, they built kind of a, a little bit of a, I guess a little colony there to kind of survive until their friends and other ships could come and, and help them out. And they discovered really quickly that this little area down here would be, would be a perfect region to, uh, you know, to re-supply um, ships moving from Europe into Asia. And so the first group to actually colonize South Africa was the Dutch. Now the Dutch never intended South Africa to be a great big Dutch colony, but it was really just a place to stop their boats and refuel them. I guess not really refuel them because they were driven by wind, but to you know fill them with fresh water and supplies on their way uh, uh, to the trade routes of Asia. Without getting into a ton of detail, you should know that originally South Africa was colonized by the Dutch. And um, I guess the intention wasn't necessarily to build a massive colony, but there were Dutch people that ended up settling on the mainland, claiming land for themselves, building farms, building, uh, what do you call this, plantations. Uh, slaves were brought in from other parts of Africa and forcibly moved into South Africa. Slaves intermixed with the Khoisan people that were already there. There was lots of uh, you know, white slave owners that were having children with slave women and a kind of a whole new, uh, I guess mixed, I guess we call it like a mixed race of people was born in South Africa where you had, you know, you, you know they weren't white, they weren't black, they were somewhere in between. In fact, later on, uh, people that are no longer, that are not considered truly African black or, or European white became known in South Africa as simply just coloreds. Uh, there was just a group of people that were, you know, darker skinned than white skinned. Um, and generally in the early days of South Africa, they could own and control land. Uh, but generally speaking, they were always seen as less than, you know, the, their, uh, you know, their white European um, counterparts. In this newly formed Dutch South African country, or I guess colony, not everything was rainbows and butterflies. Uh, as you guys probably can guess, in the 16 and 1700s, there was still a monarchy that existed. There was still kind of that feudal system. So people of noble class would gain or would be, would be able to have access to these new lands, whereas kind of the peasant class had to work the lands but didn't actually get access to the lands. So some of these peasants decided that the best thing for them to do in order to find lands of their own was to leave the southern part of South Africa and to begin to trek north. So I'll show you guys on this picture here. Some of them left the colonies in the south down here and they began to trek north in what was known as the first trek. So as these new kind of peasant groups started to trek north, they began to feel a sense of their own identity. They began to kind of form a new language that was kind of a combination of you know, their old Dutch language mixed with some of the, the native tribes in the area. Um, and they also began to discover new mineral wealth. They found in the, in the kind of the mountains of the, the central part of South Africa, they found gold and they found diamonds and other delicious things. Uh, they began to have fights with native tribes in the north. And, uh, you know, when the British, who were the most powerful empire in the world, heard about the mineral wealth and land wealth of, of Dutch South Africa, they decided they wanted a piece of this pie. And so in 1795 and again in 1806, the British actually invaded the Dutch South African colony and claimed it as their own. Not something that the British were pretty well known for. You know, they'd wait for somebody else to go colonize that region. Like that's what happened in Canada. The French came and colonized it here, but then they just defeat them in war and then take whatever, you know, used to belong to them. So Dutch South Africa now became British South Africa. Now, many Dutch in the South were upset by this. They didn't like the fact that their lands were now under British control and the British brought with them all of their kind of ideologies and their ideas. And so lots of these Dutch South Africans followed their other you know, brethren 
and cistern. I don't know if you can call that cistern. That's not a word. And they began to fall, they began to also move north. And that's what this picture here is of. So if I was to show you this, so here is the Cape Colony. This is what the British controlled. And you guys can see all of these lines. There's a set of blue lines. There's a kind of a brownish line, a red line, and a green line. These are different groups of, of Dutch. We kind of call them pioneers. They actually took covered wagons and oxen, and they took their families, and they began to travel north and began to find new lands they began to fight wars with native tribes, like all these little scissors marks are places where big battles happened, like the battle for Blood River, where the, the, um, the Dutch South Africans, uh, Afrikaners got in a huge fight with the Zulu. Lots of Zulu people were slaughtered there on the Blood River. And kind of all these new kind of stories of, of Dutch heroism and you know Dutch conquering new lands kind of was formed. And these Dutch people no longer felt like they were just Dutch, but they began to feel a sense that they were independent from not only the Dutch back home in Europe, but also that they were independent from the British. And they began to kind of speak more of their own language. They began to have their kind of own sense of identity. We call this that they began to feel a sense of nationalism, that they weren't Dutch, they weren't British, but they were like their own people. And now, they called themselves by a specific name. And there's a few names that you might hear. So you might have heard these people called boar, kind of like, uh, sounds like a boar, like a pig. Different spelling, it's B-O-E-R, the boar people, okay? Um, and sometimes they're also known as the Vortrekkers, and they speak the language of Afrikaans. And so sometimes we refer to these Dutch settlers in the north as Afrikaners. Okay, so the Boer, the Afrikaners. So if you were to go to South Africa today, you'd probably see people of an English heritage there. You'd probably meet people of a Dutch heritage there. And of course, you would meet people of some sort of mix um, of different tribes. So there's, you know, obviously people that have, have come out of a mix of native groups mixing with Dutch or British, as well as there's vast amounts, as you guys know, of uh, people from South Asia, from India, that ended up coming to South Africa to work as well. So in South Africa, there are Boer people, right? There are British people, there are coloreds, which are somewhere in between, and then you have black Africans, right? And so, and, and I'm not making these distinctions for you. I'm saying there, um, historically speaking, the identity that you, you know, it was really important that you knew which ancestors you came from. Um, and this is going to play into, in, into what I'm going to talk about here in a minute. And you're going to understand in a second. So basically, um, the idea here is that the, the Dutch and the British become very separate. And as a result, the Dutch start to feel a sense of independence. And eventually, they built three kind of separate colonies to the British. These colonies were known as the Orange Free State, the Transvaal, and the Natalia uh, State. And these areas were controlled predominantly by these Boer Dutch South Africans. And eventually, in the late 1800s, these Boer people came together in unity and attempted to fight the British to gain their independence as their own country. And this led to what was known as the First and the second Boer Wars. Now, I'm not gonna get into a ton of detail about this, obviously, because it doesn't really matter that much, but you should know that they did fight for their independence, and it wasn't given to them. In fact, the British were able to defeat the Boer in these Boer Wars, and eventually, in 1936, South Africa was given its independence, right? Much like Canada was given its independence, it was done as though they were still part of the British crown or the British empire. So yeah, they were given their independence, but, but they still had to recognize the king or the queen as the head of their state, if that makes sense to you. Once they gained their independence, there was kind of a, what we call a power vacuum, where who should be in control of the country? It wasn't the British anymore, right? And it definitely wasn't going to be people of African heritage because they were seen as less than. But these, these Boer people began to take control over the whole country of South Africa. And they began to form political parties that put them in control. Even though in many ways, not in many ways, 
even though they actually were a minority in this country. The Boer people were a significant minority compared to the many colored people as well as the many other people of African heritage that lived there. Um, but they, these Afrikaners or these Boer people became in charge in the 1940s and into the 1950s. And they formed a new government and this government was very, it was very uh, anti-black or anti-colored. In fact, they were very loyal to, uh, to white people only. They were kind of a white supremacist, uh, kind of a white supremacist group of Afrikaners. And when they formed the government, they passed a law there. And this law was known as the law of apartheid. So I'm gonna show you guys that on the board. I'm gonna write that out for you. This is pretty, a pretty nasty law. Wow, this pen doesn't work at all. If, just so you guys know, I made that shot. You, you will never know because you can't see. Oh, it's EI. Apartheid or apartheid. Okay, and so this word apartheid is very important that you understand. But the word apartheid in Afrikaans or in their Boer language simply means to set apart. You can probably guess what that means, but what this essentially was, was it was a set of laws that, that sought to ensure that white people had rights, right? The right to vote, to own land, to control things, right? And people that were either colored of some sort of mixed ancestry or people that were black, right? Meaning they were from, uh, that they could trace the roots back to uh, African tribes. Well, they were seen as having no rights. They weren't seen as citizens. They could live in the country, but they had no citizenship. They couldn't have land, they couldn't vote. Um, and there was all sorts of rules about the way that they could behave. And the idea uh, was that the Boer, these Afrikaners wanted to keep their language and their, and their race pure. And so through the 1940s, 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, and even into the 1980s, right? This Boer, nationalist South African group, right, began to control South Africa and began to suspend the rights of people of color. And this caused major racial tension to exist in South Africa. And so what your job to do now is going to be, is you guys are going to be answering a couple of questions about apartheid and you're gonna give me, you're gonna be giving me some details of what that apartheid looked like. And then starting uh, in our next lesson, we're going to talk about how apartheid ended and what's still going on in South Africa today. So I hope I didn't bog you down with too much boring history about South Africa. But generally, if I was to do a quick review, this is it. South Af Number one, South Africa is first established by the Dutch, right, as a colony to refuel their ships. Number two, right, some, some Dutch people left South Africa and went north and they found gold and other resources. The British saw this as tasty, so they conquered and took over the, the colony of the Dutch in the late 17, early 1800s. Then a massive amount of Dutch people moved north in what was known as the Great Trek, and they established three new Dutch territories known as the Orange Free State, the Transvaal, and the Natalia State. Then they went to war with the British in the First and Second Boer War in order to gain their independence. They lost, but by 1936, if I was put up, I can't actually put up another finger because I'm holding the selfie stick, but you can kind of see my thumb there. Eventually in 1936, the Dutch, uh, I guess the, the I guess it's not a British, it, the, the Dutch, it's not Dutch, it's British. The British colony of South Africa was given its independence and as a result of gaining their independence, the Dutch Boer took over uh, kind of the politics and established a new Dutch controlled or a Boer controlled uh, government. And they established, if I was put number seven, they established what was known as apartheid, which was a new set of laws that would separate people of color from people that were white. Um, it was uh, a set of policies fully and devoted, fully fully devoted to kind of racial segregation. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about in this, uh, it, that's what you guys are gonna be answering as far as questions in this little assignment. And we'll get more into this um, in our next lesson. Thanks for watching.